Greetings and welcome to today's 10 minute painting lesson. We're going to begin here, as we generally do, with a large damp square headed brush. I'm then going to apply some titanium white paint to the top right hand corner of our canvas and begin to blend it downwards. From there I'm going to take a good amount of primary blue with a little bit of Mars black and I'm going to apply this new mixture underneath our initial application. Then I'm going to blend the two together fairly softly in an attempt to render a smooth gradient from one to the other. The goal here is to render something very much void of brush strokes or implications and this is generally best achieved by applying the pigment with a very soft application. Generally when we apply a lot of pressure with our brush we tend to push pigment on both corners of our brush which renders a much more streaky aesthetic. Now as I descend farther into the water here I'm beginning to interject a little bit of additional Mars black paint and I'm doing this just to further pronounce the gradient which we're creating in our water. The top should be a little bit brighter and the bottom should be a little bit darker. I'm also going back and re-blending areas, ensuring that they are nice and smooth. This is only achievable, however, because our brush is always damp. The added interjection of the water into the brush mixes with the pigments and it extends their wet life. It also ensures that we're able to drag them out farther than what we'd normally be able to do. Now I'm switching over to the medium sized square headed brush and I'm interjecting a little bit of additional black into the blue which we were just using. This is going to make for a slightly darker landmass and it'll stand out while still having a similar color scheme. Once that's in place as I like it, I'm going to go back to my palette. I'm going to grab a mixture with slightly more blue and I'm going to work on a landmass that's slightly farther away. When you're working on a seascape and you want to interject depth into it, generally subjects that are very far in the distance, land masses that are very far away, they're going to have a color palette which is much more akin to that of the water that surrounds them. Where the subjects in the foreground are going to have much more of their innate coloring, they're going to have much more stark contrasts. The blacks will probably be much more heavy. And this is because subjects in the far distance have a lot more reflected light and color around them. They also have a lot more water between them and you. So the colors should slowly dissipate as you get farther and farther away in your seascape painting. From there I'm switching over to my larger square headed brush and I'm beginning to work on the foreground here. At this point the blue is almost null and void, we're working with much more Mars black and we're working on these sharper rocks. Now we can be very creative with these rocks because we are underwater and they have been eroded in very different ways thanks to currents and underwater sea life. So we get to be a little bit more creative with our rocks than we normally are. Here you can see that I'm kind of going over areas a couple of times and that's because acrylic paints are innately fairly transparent. Sometimes you will have to go back and work in a couple of additional layers and that is just part of the process. Now we're also using the square headed brushes because a, they can hold a good amount of paint, but B, because they have very sharp edges, which is fantastic for rendering subjects that are also fairly hard and sharp, much like the rock and the landmass, which we're currently working on. Now I'm switching over to the smaller square headed brush, and I'm beginning to work on the coral, which we have here in the foreground. I'm using the same pigment that we were using initially and we're rendering something that's very much akin to a silhouette here. Now I'm trying to ensure that a lot of the coral here does point directly back into the painting because whether we like it or not, everything in our painting is subconsciously acting like a leading a line. The eye is going to follow it to a point. So if you can get it to kind of direct the eye towards where you want the viewer's eye to be, that is ideal. However, I do have a couple of pieces that go off in different directions just to kind of balance it out and ensure that the painting isn't too simple. Now I'm going to take my smaller round headed brush, some titanium white paint and a good amount of water and I'm going to begin working in some rays of light 
coming from the top of the water here. I want them to be the most white and opaque at the top, and then I want them to slowly descend and become much more transparent as we get farther into the water area. Now, it's worth noting that we're using a lot of water to do this because the more water you incorporate in your mixtures, the more thin your pigments will be, the more transparent they'll be, and the softer they will be. Speaking of softness, we're using the smaller round-headed brush here because it innately has those round edges, and they're great for rendering a more soft aesthetic which is great for these beams of light right here because we don't want them to be too harsh. Now you may have to go back and incorporate a good number of layers because we are using a lot of water and that means that the pigment will dry fairly transparently. So it's just something we need to take our time with and instigate a little bit of patience. Then I'm switching over to my smaller square headed brush and in a Z shaped pattern, I'm applying this titanium white paint. I'm trying to ensure that we have all of these reflections on the top of the water and that they kind of move down and descend slowly. You want them to be most prominent in the top right hand corner and then you want them to dissipate as they move downwards and to the left. Generally, the best way to do this is to apply the pigment and then to move out in that direction as the paint naturally runs out on your brush, it will look much more transparent on the canvas. Then I'm going to grab some Mars black and I'm going to begin drawing in our sea turtle here. It's simply going to be a silhouette so it'll be a cathartic process of simply coloring something in and I drew my initial drawing with a black sharpie marker which generally shows through a couple thin layers of paint. So I know exactly where my turtle is because I can still see my drawing. It's also worth noting that using these Sharpie markers can be very advantageous to your work in the process because they don't bleed into the pigments much like a charcoal or a pencil would. Now here you can see that I'm going back and I'm recovering areas and being fairly sharp and that's important. When you're working on your main subject you want to ensure that your line work is nice and clean and you're getting it exactly how you'd like. Then I'm going to take a similar pigment once it's kind of subdued on my brush and I'm going to work some fish here into the background of the painting. Now because the fish are so far away we're not going to be able to render anything very detailed but what we are going to do is render the implication of them. Something that makes the eye subconsciously think oh that's what that is. So perhaps we're working with a little bit of their general shape. However, we're not trying to incorporate fins and everything on all of them because it would look very awkward if they were that far away and we could see all of that detail. When you want to render depth, you need to ensure that the backgrounds and middle grounds are slightly more simplified than the foregrounds. Here we're going back and we're adding in some additional coral and I'm doing this to kind of create some additional leading lines. As you can see they kind of point towards the sea turtle much like the ones over on the left hand side of the painting. Then I'm going to take my smaller round headed brush and begin to work in some additional Z like patterns in the top right hand corner. It's important that we go back and do this a couple of times because the paint is going to dry so transparently and this gives us an opportunity to brighten up a couple of areas. Now here you can see that I'm trying to do the same thing with the light sources, however I'm doing it around the turtle which is a much more arduous process because we have to be very cognizant of where that turtle is and our line work around it. However it is still doable if you can do the light sources before the turtle that is ideal but it is something we had to go back to and it is something that we were able to fix. Then I'm going to use that same Z-like pattern down here on the bottom land mass as you can see and that's because it's reflecting down there from the top of the water. So we're using a bit of a brighter blue and we're not using a pure white as that would stand out and create too much of a stark contrast. 
With that being said, that is essentially what our 10 minute version of this painting will look like. However, as per usual, I did have a couple of additional ideas that I did want to share with you. So, here's an extra minute and a half sped up, and I thought we could talk about a couple of additional things that we're going to do in the painting. Here, I'm just throwing in some additional highlights to that water at the top, and I'm ensuring that we do a couple of extra layers around the turtle to ensure that the light that we were working on doesn't go on top of it and it remains nice and clean. It's also going to add a second layer that ensures that the turtle is nice and opaque and it isn't transparent to a point. Then I'm going to throw in an additional rock to the far right hand side of the painting, which is going to frame the painting and create a little bit of a vignette. Then I'm going to add some additional highlights back down into the water area and a couple into the rock to the far left here, which is just going to work in a little bit of additional depth. But with all of that being said, that is essentially our 10 to 11 and a half ish minute painting. If you'd like to learn more, there is a link in the description to my ebook, Acrylics for Beginners. If you'd like hour long lessons like this, where I also show you my color palette and how much water I'm grabbing, there are hour long lessons listed in the description and over on my Patreon account. With all of that being said, I post every Saturday. I hope to see you next Saturday. Thank you so much for watching. And above all, as always, stay creative.